World Drum Club.
It's springtime. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday Muse Day. I'm Kalani. It is springtime. Do you guys see what I did there? This is out of the Corvette uh, that I'm rehabbing. This one. I put it here. I'm hoping I don't hit myself in the head today. That's a chance I'm willing to take for your entertainment. And we'll talk about this one in a second. Uh, I've used this little one before, this little silver high-pitched one. Uh, nice to see you guys. I'm, I'm happy that the sound is on. I've been thinking about it all day. Make sure the sound is on. Make sure the sound is on. <laughs> all right, we're gonna play a little bit more. Well, I'll play a little bit more. You guys can play if you want at home. Let's dig in a little bit. We'll check back in a second.
Okay, that was a dramatic ending. All right, you guys, welcome back. Let's see who's here. Hope you guys are doing well and you're enjoying spring so far. Uh, thanks to Roseanne for being here and saying hello to everybody. I see some of the usual suspects. Oh my God, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna scroll back to the beginning. Uh, let me grab my phone and welcome uh, newcomers. If you're new, give us a thumbs up in the chat. Uh, I see Lacey, Mary, of course Roseanne is here. Chris, hello. Bill, welcome back. Uh, Charlie, I don't know if, you get, if you've been here before. I don't know if you're new. I can't remember. Excuse me if I don't remember. Uh, John Paul, welcome back. And Sue is here. Alejandro. It does need some beer and bow. I agree with you. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, welcome, Charlie Martello. Nice to see you guys. Uh, and if you guys don't mind, could you put your put where you put where you're located, if you want, as specific or as general as you want. Put it in the comments so we kind of get a feel for where everybody's coming from, so to speak. All right. Alejandro, welcome. Christina is here. Cornelius, yes, welcome back. The regular. And Morris, welcome. All right. Yeah, I appreciate you guys showing up. Uh, I've got more music coming a little bit later on. We've got video, we've got reflections of Yanni. Well, a photo. Uh, I think it's a pretty fun photo. And uh, some announcements. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Gimme 5 coming up a little bit later. Um, so welcome. Wow, we're already 15 minutes in. It was a lot of, kind of a lot of jamming. But I, as you guys can see, I broke out the hybrid kit. I've got the Farmer Foot Drums bass drum down here. I have the mic turned off right now. I usually mic it up with a bass drum mic. It's there here. It sounds like this. Yeah, that's fun. And then I have the bongos here, of course. Uh, I've got a little snare. It's a 13 inch old, it's an old legend snare that I have. And then some hi-hats. Uh, and then a conga, of course, over here on my left. Everything's loud right now because I'm using my other mic um, for talking. So that's what's going on. I've got two springs, the car spring and this ohm spring. So let me tell you a little bit, of, a little bit about this one. So I broke this out. I've used this before, I have a video on it. This is an ohm chime, an ohm spring chime, and it was made by the, uh, the ohm percussion company, which is no longer in existence, uh, designed uh, by J John Stannard, who had a company called JW Stannard, and uh, they used to make all these really nice chimes. Uh, so if you were buying chimes back in the 90s, early 2000s, maybe you've seen the uh, ohm chimes. They're, highly desirable at this point. I don't, they're, they don't, you can't get them anymore. There are some great chimes being made, um, but you can't get these anymore. So um, I'm gonna try to clip this Ooh, right on my bass drum. And uh, I like it, it's, it's kind of cool. Let me play it for you again, just solo. And you, one of the nice features about this one is of course it's, you can spin it. So you can either spin it before you hit it or after you hit it or at the same time, or, or you can have it bump into itself. And then you get the spinning both ways. But that's a pretty cool effect. I have a, um, okay, so on this mic, you may have noticed that some of the sounds will fade out and then they just vanish. That's because I have what's called a noise gate on this microphone, and it's really there to just get rid of like any hiss or background noise uh, or dogs or neighbor dogs barking, maybe. Uh, so what happens is if, if there isn't enough sound going into the mic, if there isn't a certain level going into the mic, it completely shuts off. And so sometimes that's why you'll hear sounds kind of fade out to zero. Like that. <laughs> but the cool thing about this, and maybe I can show you in the overhead, is that it, it also, it also kind of, let me see if I can move this closer. There we go. Um, it also just looks cool when it's vibrating. I don't know if you guys can see that, but look at this. 
and it's going in and out and vibrating and you could, it's very visual so you could see everything that's happening there. All right, and I do see you guys are posting where you're, where you're from, where you're living. That's, that is really cool, people from all over. Um, so that is the Ohm Spring Chime, and uh, it's just a unique sound, and you can tell it's got a natural, what we call phasing as it spins around. Um, not unlike, and it's not the same, but not unlike a Leslie speaker, which it has horns that are directional, and it spins around, and it gives you a kind of vibrato effect. This is a little bit similar to that. Um, this one back here, that's a pretty awesome sound. So I did want to play you this, the Corvette spring. Let me go, just stand up. And maybe I can do a Corvette uh, spring solo. So this is, this one, sorry, I got my cajon on my headphone cord. There we go. This one is out of a 1971 Corvette that I'm rehabbing. And I'm not using the springs anymore, so I thought I would just hang it in the studio. Um, and, uh, you can, you guys hear that? <laughs> That's another instrument. So I have it hanging from the same uh, system of pipes that my mic is on. So that's a whole nother cool sound. So the vibration of the, of the string here is going all the way up through the hardware. That's not the spring, that's the, the cord. fun. I'll just stand here so you guys can see it. Spinning around. So that's a big heavy car spring. Uh, don't try that at home. <laughs> or you can't. Uh, one of these days I'm going to get my, my welding equipment out and I want to recreate what I used to have like 20 years ago or 30 years ago. I, I had a car spring I took it to a shop and they welded a plate on there and then I stuck a, a piezo, a contact pickup, I glued it on there and then I could plug it in. And that, my friends, is a whole nother, it's a whole nother world of sound when you can get a metal instrument and actually have a contact mic on it. It's incredible. I'll try to, I'll, I'll work on that, see if I can get that working. I have a couple pickups around here. I think I have some parts I can put together and uh, I'll see if I can, um, do a spring with an electronic pickup. Because I want you guys to hear it, because it's amazing. It'll change your life. <laughs> It'll change your, your musical life. All right. Um, that's pretty much what I have that might be new, except I do have over here, I want you guys to check out these hi-hats. And if you, if you notice, there's a, the World Drum Club logo here, and that's because I'm, I've got some symbols in the pipeline that uh, I am co-developing with a symbol company. So when those get sorted out, we'll have that. And uh, I'm working on some symbols that are for percussionists, kind of more like for hand percussionists, like small hi-hats, a small ride, a, a small splash or crash symbol that you can, and you can play them with your hands or small sticks. And they're just small for a small setup like this one. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. So that's coming up. I have to get some cymbal stands set up in here. I'm not sure how I want to do that yet. I might want to hang them from the ceiling. Like I have a lot of my stuff here in the ceiling. That's why you guys don't see camera tripods and mic stands and stuff because it's all here. It's coming literally like bolted into the ceiling. So I have all, all this stuff, lights, mics, cameras, other stuff uh, coming down. So I might do that for the cymbal stands as well. Not portable. Uh, you can't do a gig like that, but uh, it's good for this situation. Um, all right, uh, so coming up, remember we have Gimme Five coming up in a little bit, and that's where you guys choose five instruments. So maybe, well, you know, we're not going to do that yet. I want to show you guys a video. We're not going to talk about Gimme Five right now. <laughs> uh, what I do want to show you is another video from the Drum Fun. Uh, collection 
and uh, this one I believe is called Pieces of Eight. And I may have shown this before, but it doesn't really matter. It's good to watch these games and refresh your memory. So if you're somebody that works with kids or groups uh, or groups of adults who act like kids uh, or who would like to have fun, uh, you know, summer camp games, classroom games, team building stuff, uh, you might find this interesting. And even if you're not, it might give you some ideas uh, of what you could do with a small group of people just to have fun rhythmically and it's very informal, very casual, just a fun way to have a rhythmic musical experience in a super easy way. You'll see what I mean uh, when you watch the video. So I want to play that for you. Uh, let's see if it is, I'm not sure where I put it, I rearranged some stuff so let me see, is it here? Uh, if it's here I'll see you on the other side and I think it's right I think it's next, let me see. So this is from the Drum Fun uh, collection, available to patrons at the courses tier on our Patreon site. Okay, this is called Pieces of Eight. And you all have different instruments, and what we're gonna do is, you're gonna get a chance to play your instrument and make one sound on your secret number. And you can choose your secret number right now. So pick a number from one to eight. You don't have to tell anybody. You just have to play your one sound when I count your number. So I'll count through from one to eight, and I'll repeat that a few times. I'm also going to play the rattle on the beat so you can hear the beat. All right? And then you're just going to join in. And once we start, pick your number, and then listen to the melody. Just listen to the nice uh, pattern that it produces. All right? And then you can maybe figure who's playing on my number. Maybe there's somebody who's playing on your number or who's playing before you or after you. Okay? And see who's doing that. All right, here we go. I'll count and you come in whenever you're ready. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Listen to the melody. So we're straight into Reflections of Yanni, you guys. Um, this photo is, so that's me uh, with the kind of dark glasses on in the middle. And then on my right side, your left, is Bradley Joseph, keyboardist. And on my left side is bass player Rick Fiorbracci, amazing bass player. Played on my first two CDs, Pangea and Insights. And then in front of him, being sneaky, and I think he's given us the finger there, is Charlie Adams, <laughs> the drummer. <laughs> and, uh, and then that's Shardad Rahani kind of sneaking in the frame there on the, on, you, on the right side of your frame. So back when we were all thin and svelte. Um, okay, so that's just from probably from a, a dinner somewhere or maybe from, maybe from catering. I'm not sure. We had some good catering on the road, I gotta say. We'd get down in the south and they would do like cherry pie and they had barbecue sometimes and like, we're always like, yes, we're going to, 
We're going to the south. We're gonna get some southern. We're gonna get some biscuits. We're gonna get some <laughs> some good pie down there. Um, every area of the country. I'm not. I'm not saying it's be the best. It's unique. But that's the nice thing about touring is you get to experience the local culture through the catering um, a lot of the time. And then after the show, we'd have uh, you know take take out food on the bus. So um, yeah, when we were in like Kansas City, I mean, come on. At the time, though, I was trying to be a vegetarian, so that wasn't working out so well. But I, I do appreciate it now, looking back, <laughs> the opportunity to sample food from all over all over the country. It was, it's great. So um, I want to tell you guys about this uh, this thing, which is the uh, Rod Striker from Native tongue percussion, and I've, I've been using this. You can put it on a hi-hat, you put it on a bell, and you mount this on a stand like this, and then you can just tap on it. You can hit, you can play different instruments. Um, there's one that, it's kind of like this over here, uh, similar to that, right? But this, this one goes on the drum, and this one can go on a stand. Now, why am I showing this? Because they've donated three of these and we're gonna have a giveaway on World Drum Club. You need to be a patron. So if you're not a patron, uh, consider joining and supporting the channel, but this will be like a premium giveaway coming up uh, in the next few weeks. We're gonna give away three of these, but I'm gonna spread them out over time. So maybe we'll do one winner a month. Um, but I do wanna thank them, Native Tongue Percussion. You can guys, guys go check out their stuff and support them. Um, as they support World Drum Club. Also, I want to point out that if you're if you hadn't already, you can scan the QR code right here. This is our buy me a coffee kind of thing. Uh, so if you're not a patron, but you appreciate the the live stream, you appreciate all the effort, um, chip in if you like. You can do that right there with the QR code, super easy. And if you're watching on your phone right now and you can't scan it because you're on your phone, go back and look at this live stream later or any of these live streams recently in the last month. And, uh, and then use your phone on a, like a computer screen and get it that way. Uh, all right, so let's go over the Gimme 5 stuff now. Um, and so you see what I have here. So the Gimme 5, you choose five instruments that I have around here. And later, a little bit later, I will play them. I will play them into a loop, in, into the looper and, and out of the looper. And we'll make some music, all right? So you can pick five things, including native flutes, um, I've got ukuleles here. I've got some other stuff kicking around. Those of you who have been watching the uh, Tuesday Musees probably are familiar with some of the stuff I have. Um, but definitely I've got the little drum set set up, so if you can use that, that would be good because it's already set up. Uh, and uh, we'll go from there. So start putting together that list of stuff. Um, and while you're doing that, we'll, we'll go to kind of a, a little bit of Q&A and also I want to talk about our feature. Um, so let me see where we are in the lineup here. I need to I need to make notes so I know where I'm clicking. Okay, that's that, and that's that back, and we're at Q and A. Um, before we do Q and A, I want to show you this, which is this was Percussion Masterclass. I changed the name to Drum Club Hangout uh, because I thought some people. And I think Roseanne brought up this point. Some people might have thought that the percussion master class was like for master percussionists, which it which is not really. It's for any of you uh, who are patrons and you want to get some coaching hangout, or it's just a hang, uh, and that happens every second and fourth Sundays. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that's not 5 p.m. Sorry, I just made this graphic and now I'm realizing it's wrong. 10:30 to 11:30 a.m. Pacific time. I will correct that. That's what you get when you come out and do stuff right before you go live, like make a new graphic. So that's okay. Um, we'll we'll get that sorted out. Um, where am I going with this? Let me. Oh my God, you guys. Okay, Q and Sorry about that. I need to uh, write down where all these. I, I have um, numbers that I I go to. How how do I say it? Presets and they're numbers, and I just change some of them, and I need to write down what the presets are, so I'm not like pressing all these buttons and you guys are seeing all sorts of craziness. Because you don't need that in your life. That's why you're coming here, to get away from that craziness. Um, 
So uh, Q and A, and wanna, I do want to talk about spring time, uh, and I want to let you know that we've got a special event coming up. Uh, not necessarily on World Drum Club, but kind of tangent related with the Native American style flutes. If you're a Native American style flute player or fan, or you're curious, um, if you're Native flute curious, then uh, come and either get on my mailing list, which is kalanimusic.com. You can get on my mailing list there. Uh, but better, you know, just check the Patreon page. And you don't have to be a patron to see some of the posts I post there. I do post some things that are available to the public. Most of what I post is for patrons only. A lot of that is for the courses tier or private lessons patrons. But I, I will be announcing a special event coming up that is for the Native American flute community that involves three amazing flute artists. I'm hosting the event and organizing it and promoting it. So keep on the lookout for that. All right. Uh, springtime. Is, is a time of, uh, you know, growth, change, blooming. I think it's a time to experiment and uh, try something new. It's, it is kind of about newness, you know, rejuvenation, uh, recreating yourself. You've had winter to hibernate, to plan, to, you know, regroup. <laughs> and you're thinking, yeah, I was shoveling snow half the winter in and facing blizzards. But that aside, um, yeah, now it's time to, to, to do the new you, right? So I just want to put, put it out there to you guys that it, you know, pick up a new instrument, uh, take lessons on something that, you know, that you haven't thought about really before, but look into it. Usually, you know, we, the problem with thinking that you don't, you're not into something is that you haven't gotten into it to know whether you like it or not. So in order to get past the resistance, you know, of trying something uh, or, or getting out of the judgment of something that you don't know about is to just do it, you know, try it, like play the Native American style flute or pick up the ukulele, things that I enjoy a lot. And I try to promote that uh, to be, you know, for you guys, even though this is mostly a drumming channel, I really push people to get into learning a harmony instrument, maybe learning a melodic instrument to start improvising in a different way because it's all music. You are musicians and you're musical and you can, you can transfer your skills from one instrument to another. It's not that hard. Once you have a few music skills, in fact, drummers and percussionists, when we go to other instruments, we've got a massive rhythmic skill set that we can take with us. It's pretty amazing. I mean, I think drummers and percussionists make great like guitar players, string players, or even Native American style flute because we've already got the rhythmic stuff together, which I think, even though a lot of people think that, or say that, you know, the drums are primitive or the drums are easy, or the drums are great for starting. Um, I don't really agree with that. I think drums are really easy to, to just play something on, but they're not that easy to play music on and be musical and, you know, have it feel good. So I think that the rhythmic part of music is actually one of the more challenging areas. That's what I've experienced as a teacher, seeing a lot of students, you know, hearing people all over the all over the world playing music. I think most people actually struggle with rhythm more than anything else. I'll just say that. I'll go on the record right now and say that rhythm and, you know, mastering the rhythmic parts of music, and there's lots of parts of music, but the rhythmic part, and I'm talking about timing, uh, grooving, which is micro timing or the feel, uh, phrasing, form, styles, all that stuff is rhythmic. And so when you get that together, you can just take it with you. If you want to go to flute or go to ukulele or go to the piano, which is a percussion instrument, by the way, um, take it all with you. So just um, know that. Uh, and maybe, you know, so you could work on your rhythmic, rhythmic stuff if that's a new area for you. If you want to challenge yourself, work on rhythm or pick up a different instrument and transfer all of your existing skills over to that. Uh, a lot of people have been doing that lately with hand pans and tongue drums, uh, but I'd say go for ukulele, go for native flute, go for, go, go for whatever, whatever you think you might be interested in and try it out. Take a few lessons, try it out. We've got courses already. If you're a courses tier patron, I've got a whole ukulele course. I've got a whole Native American flute course you're taken care of. Start, get you into it, you'll be playing. So 
if, if you want another reason to become a patron, there you go. Courses level. Um, you get all the courses. All right, you guys. Um, so that's all I wanted to say about, about the springs, about springtime. Uh, but whatever you guys are doing, whatever you're springing forward towards, uh, I hope you guys are doing it well and you're feeling good and you're making the most of it. Um, any questions? Did I miss any questions? I haven't been looking at the feed, so... Somebody said, don't encourage Roseanne. <laughs> oh, don't encourage me, Roseanne. I thought you guys were like, don't encourage Roseanne. Um, good, you're inspired. I see some some nice words down here. Um, yeah, Martello, Martello. Am I saying it right? Is it? It's not Martello, right? It's Martello? That's what my Spanish tells me. Um, hand pans are kind of pricey, but... Um, they are amazing. I mean, if you've got a little extra, extra money that just burning a hole in your pocket, um, yeah, they're pretty fun, pretty fun. And un, but unfortunately, I mean, you can't really. Well, let me say this: I did, I did get one sent to me that they sell on Amazon, and I'm not saying you should get those. Uh, it was made in another country, a faraway country. Um, it's okay. You know, it's not that ba not not too bad. It's like a third of the cost of uh, handmade ones or craftsman made ones. I'm assuming this one was made in some sort of factory with very poor working conditions <laughs> and no environmental laws. But if that's okay with you, then you could try one of those um, factory made hand pans. It you know, it's not too bad. I had it sent to me. I didn't buy it. Uh, but uh, I, a lot of the stuff I use, actually, people give me because I'm, you know, showing it and I'm representing their products, which, so there's a reciprocal relationship there. Um, okay. Oh, did you say yes, Martello, as in Martello or Marteo? Marteo. See, I still don't know. You, can you put lo or yo? <laughs> and, and I'll know which one it is. Um, all right. What microphones are you using in your studio? Cornelius wants to know. Um, so I'm using two mics right now. I'm using a, uh, for the music part, which, which you're not hearing right now. You're not, I'll, I'll A-B them. So right now you're hearing a Sennheiser shotgun mic. It's right here. It's just out of view. So I have a, a Sennheiser, it's a long mic. It's like this long, it's like a foot long. And I got it a long time ago, but it's a, it's a shotgun Sennheiser. I usually use that a lot of the time because it picks up my voice well and I can sort of aim it at my face and it doesn't get the other stuff, it doesn't get the congas and other instruments too loud. And that's always a challenge when you're doing the videos that the kind of videos that I do where I'm talking and playing. Um, I could use a headset, but I really don't like the way they sound, the headsets sound with drums and percussion. So then I'd have to switch back and forth. So I use this shotgun a lot of the time uh, so I don't have to switch back and forth between different microphones. I can pretty much get away with using the one mic, and then maybe I just lower the volume a little bit when I'm going to go play. Um, what I am doing for the live stream a lot of the time is I'll switch back and forth between my talking mic, my shotgun mic, and my music mic, which is over here. This one is a Rode K2, and it is a uh, large diaphragm tube mic. You can look it up. Rode K2. I have two of those, just using one right now. Let me, um, I'll play you a sample, just so you can hear. So the, the shotgun is very bright, it has a high IQ, but it's almost kind of harsh. Now let me switch mics and you can hear the K2. Still kind of loud. Let me see. K2. Shotgun. Whoa, that is hot. Shotgun. K2. Warmer, right? I have to get close to it. That's why it's great if, my, if I was up here. It'd be great for my voice. <laughs> But I'm not, I'm not going to have a mic right near my head. But that, that mic, the K2, would be more, like you guys just heard, that's more of a podcast announcer, radio personality kind of mic 
Uh, so there you go. But it works pretty well as a general mic to capture lots of sound. That's kind of the one, the K2 is what I use when I want things to be more musical, a little warmer, a little more full bandwidth. Um, oh, okay. Thanks, Martello. Martello! Now I got it. Like Nutella. <laughs> except, except not the same. Martello. All right. Um, okay, give me five choice will be, all right, Cornelius. Now, what is it? Okay, so get, that's awesome. It's just coming in here. So uh, drums, Corvette spring, <laughs> bongos, ukulele, native flute, fast seven, eight. Okay, I see. We've got the Yanni thing happening. Cornelius, I see what you're doing. All right, that's fine. Uh, I got to think about it for a second. Maybe, uh, yeah, I got to think about keys and let me um, get my, uh, I have to get the, the, um, my like beat in my ear. So I'm going to set that up for seven, eight and uh, just a second, I have to listen to it. All right. All right, that's set up. Um, oh, there's an ukulele right here. How about that? <laughs> I think it's even close enough. That's the shotgun mic. It doesn't sound bad. I might use that for the ukulele. Just as a sample, let me play you the K2 on ukulele. On ukulele. But you see, hear how nice that is? excited. All right, let's see. Well, I'll see what I can get going here. Um, all right, are we good? Do we have any more? Uh, Lazy asked, do I have one of those wood train whistles? Actually, I do. I have a few. I've got, <laughs> I've got a couple of the smaller ones, and then I have this giant one. It's like made out of a four by four. It's massive. I have it somewhere in a box somewhere. I'll see if I can dig it out sometime, but it's that. It's this giant train whistle. Uh, maybe if we, if I do Aki Wowo again, I could do the train, right? Well, you could always put a train whistle in, in just about anything. So, um, yeah, I do have a, actually I have a bunch of, bunch of whistles. Maybe I could do a feature sometime on some of the whistles I have. I have a few train whistles. I've got a wooden one, the wooden one, but I also have some like studio train whistles, like they're like professional quality they're like all chrome and metal and they <laughs> it's ridiculous who needs that percussionists all right so we're gonna get going with uh the gimme five you guys because um i do have to leave on time today so we have about 12 minutes which is perfect uh i appreciate you guys being here and if you have to jump out before we're done done then uh thank you and we'll see you next week and otherwise, thanks to Cornelius for the suggestion um, for the Gimme 5. So let me see. I got to review again. Drum kit. Oh, Corvette Spring. I don't want to forget that. Bongos. Ukulele native flute. Okay. Fast 7 8. Uh, it's tricky. This is a very physical, because I, I have to turn around. Maybe I'll get up and play the Corvette string, or Corvette spring. <laughs> Strings and springs, there you go. That could be a, 
ukulele uh, car repair meetup group of some sort. All right, you guys, uh, I'm going to get playing, and uh, let's see where we go, let's see where we end up. I have to find a place to put this, all this stuff, so it's, let me see.
Spring has sprung, you guys. <laughs> I think I might have sprung a spring. I don't know. Uh, hey, you guys, thank you for showing up uh, for yourself and for each other. Thanks to Roseanne Musser for being our uh, gracious host and staying on top of it. And thanks to me for remembering to turn the volume up before we started. Um, thanks to Cornelius for the Gimme Five suggestion. That was a little bit challenging. Um, I wish I had more time to develop that. It was kind of fun. Maybe I'll do some, some uh, tunes in 7-8, you know. Uh, but that was fun. I haven't played in 7-8 for a long time <laughs> like that. Uh, so that was awesome. Um, thanks, you guys, for showing up. Again, uh, appreciate you. Come see us at patreon.com slash Kalani if you're not a patron already. Uh, please support the channel as much as you can in any ways you can, even if it's just sharing it on your social media. Uh, if there's a video that you like, share it. Say, hey, check this out. Um, we'd love to grow the channel and uh, just help more people and, you know, be musical. That's what we're here for. So I appreciate you. Uh, we'll see you next time on Tuesday Muse Day. Let's go back. Yeah, let's go back to the groove and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks so much, everybody.